the Lord. Amen. 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 I want to welcome you to today's service. I want to appreciate you for being with us always. Uh, those of you who are watching, on, watching us on the net, God bless you as you listen. Please invite members of the family to join us. God bless you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you. Daddy, we bless you. We honor your holy name. Thank you for another great opportunity which you have granted to us to be alive. To come before our presence and worship you this morning. Thank you, Lord, for our lives. Thank you for our families. Thank you, Daddy, for our nations. Thank you, Daddy, for planet Earth. Thank you, Lord, for everything that makes up the ecosystem. And set our thanksgiving in the most of us. Almighty God, we appreciate you, Lord, for taking us to bed last night and waking us up ill and hearty this morning. Thank you, Lord, for you have always been wonderful to us. Your constancy of love is, is marvelous. You are kind, you are good, you are merciful, you are wonderful, you are glorious, you are excellent. Be thou exalted in your wish for us. Mighty Father, we come before your throne of mercy this morning. Please, all our iniquities that we committed, committed against others, committed against you, please forgive us in your wish for us. Amen. Those who sinned against us also will forgive. Heavenly Father, forgive them in your wish for us. Amen. Lord, as we go into your word this morning, come and be in our midst. Amen. Speak with us. Amen. Lord, let your word come against us at the end of the journey. Amen. In your wish for us. Amen. Let your word move on towards righteousness. Amen. And Lord our God, when we leave this world, let us pray with you in heaven. Amen. In Yahushua's mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Once more, we want to welcome you to today's service. And we are taking our Bible passage, the first Bible passage from the book of um, Psalm 18, from 25 to 36. Can you be attentive? God bless you. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To the blameless, you show yourself blameless. To the poor, you show yourself pure. But to the devious, you show yourself pure. You save the humble, but bring low those who, whose eyes are haughty. You Lord, keep my lamp burning. My God turns my darkness into light. With your help, I can advance against the truth. With my God, I can scale a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The Lord's word is flawless. He shields all who take refuge in him. For who is God beside the Lord? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and keeps my way secure. Yes. He makes my feet like the feet of a bear. Mm. He causes me to stand on the head. Mm -hmm. He trains my hands for battle. Mm -hmm. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. Mm -hmm. You can, you make your savings help by shield, mm -hmm. and your right hand sustain me. Mm -hmm. Your help has made me great. Mm -hmm. You provide a broad path for my feet, mm -hmm. so that my ankles do not give way. Praise the Lord. Amen. We give glory to God for that passage that has read to us. And the topic for today's message is take refuge in God only. Take refuge in God only. Amen. Amen. The Bible that is read to us explains the dimensions by which God deals with us. If we are upright, God is with us. He will always be with us. If we are with Him, He never leaves us alone. If we are arrogant, He humbles us. Amen? Amen. If we are arrogant, God humbles us. If He if we are weak, he strengthens us. He says, he trains my hands for battle. With my strength, I can bend the 
arrows of gold. Amen. So, God is everything to us. God is everything to us. All we need to do is be on his side. And then, but if we decide not to be on his side, he will respond also the same way. Amen. Amen. To the upright, for instance, Job was upright. David was upright. And God remained upright with them. I don't know your relationship with God, what it is like. Are you upright? Can you stand before God like David and Job would say in yesterday's message that uh, I am blameless before him? None of us can stand that today. None of us can boldly say I am blameless before God. But yet, these mercies endures for us till eternity. Amen. Let me tell you the pattern of the message that we take now in this church. What we do in this series is to comb the Bible, as I always use the language, comb, because we want to go through the Bible. And it says in Hosea 4 6 that I, my people perish. For lack of knowledge, knowledge of me. And for us not to be in the congregation of ignorance, we need to go through the Bible, the entire Bible, to discover God's mind, God's intention towards us. And we have been taking the Bible from Genesis, now we are in Job, and from Job 1, we are up to 30 something now. So today now, we are reading Job 30, 33 to 34 or so, 30, 33 30. and 34, amen. Mm -hmm. And we have examined Job 31, we are from 1 to 32 before. Then Psalm 18 is where we are. We are still also making it that way. And that's how we want to go through the entire Bible. We are in Matthew 23 today. We've done 1 to 22, and we've learned so much from 1 to 22. And indeed, this is how we now bring together both the Old and the New Testament. And by the time we do it in one year, God helping us, we would have covered the Bible, we'll begin again. I think this method is better than big marooning or just choosing topics in such a way that, you know, we just deliver them to suit our purposes. No, the word of God is broad and is big. We need to chew everything. We need to understand. We need to go through everything, not just taking portions of it. Amen. Mm -hmm. And today, our message number is message 35. If you see our videos, you see that we number the message. So, so, so. This is message number 35. So, kindly follow. You cannot miss it. Even if you miss it before, you can always go back to the old one and then read progressively. As you are reading progressively, you are covering the entire Bible. And to, to do what? To discover what God is teaching us. Yourself. Unlike somebody reading it to you. Amen. Amen. May God Almighty prepare your hearts for understanding in your most trust name. May God Almighty also enrich me that He is using to deliver the message because it is not easy to put all these things together. And I also want to appreciate Nicky Dombro, Bible in one year. His materials have been so useful for us. Amen. Amen. May God Almighty teach us Himself in a virtuous name. Now I said, take refuge in the Lord only, no other person. Brethren, when a child is born, the child depends upon the parents, looks after the parents. I remember in those days when the preachers, the evangelists, especially there was one woman, a Lagra woman in those days that would preach to, you know, open air preaching. And she would say, the kingdom of God is at hand, that the heaven will fall, that's the language of Jesus, or we are born that the heaven is about to fall 
And any time I had that ministration, I was afraid. But I would look back and know that my mother was there. My father was there. So I was kind of comforted that hey, this heaven that wants to fall will not fall on me alone. And my mother and father, they are there to protect me. Amen. Not knowing that I was thinking in my own little way that protection belongs to my parents. I never knew. But today I knew better. Amen. Today, we have seen parents disappointing children. And there's no amount of effort that parents will make on children. Children will still find fault somewhere. Something that the parents left undone. And that will be so fundamental to them that, you know, they will get disappointed upon their parents. Amen. Amen. Then, if you look at husband and wife, the woman looks up to the husband for supplies, for protection, for something else. And the Bible is correct. I mean, she is correct because God wants us to take good care of them. More so that the Bible says they are weaker vessels. We are supposed to take good care of them. But in practice, what do we see? Most often we see that husbands disappoint their wives. Amen. Husbands disappoint their wives. And there are times that it's the wives that disappoint the husbands. Amen. Amen. And then, okay, let's leave that alone. Our expectation was that if we went to school, and by the time we graduate, we'll graduate with good grades, those who have vision. Amen. Amen. That want to graduate with good grades. But the school system, more often than not, breeds disappointment. A school that will last, will last for five years, lasting up to five, seven, eight years. I mean, by the time you are through with the tertiary institution in particular, you will discover that frustrations are set into your life. And if, okay, your expectation is that by the time the expectation of yourself and the expectation of your parents that sent you to school was that by the time you graduate, you will get careful employment or be in business such a way that you will attract financial blessings, prosperity to yourselves. But today, alas, the disappointment we have is that when there are people now who graduate for upwards of 10, 15, 20 years, and either whether in business or whether in paid employment, there is none that went. And indeed, the whole time period of some people's life, lives are wasted. That would not be your question. You trust me. And those who have experienced it, may God recover time for them. Amen. 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 So, again, thinking that your certificate will fetch you a good job or expose you to better opportunities in business became a disappointment. Amen. Amen. Okay. After all those journeys, I can be listing disappointments upon disappointments upon disappointments. But I want to, you to take you back to the Bible. And see, you see, after all the troubles, you now run to the house of God. Believing that you are running to God to give you, to take refuge in Him through His church. Amen. 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 Now, when people now troop into the church of God, what did they meet there? Christ says, Come on to me. All ye that have labored and have heavy labor, I will give you rest. But when you get to the house of the Lord, indeed, there are greater disappointments there. Does it mean that God is not answering prayers? No. But you are meeting human beings there of who are of blood and flesh and who are prone to errors and who can easily mislead you. But you trusting in the Lord, trusting that being with them, you want to see God through them. Hear what 
what I said about the church. Amen. Matthew 23. That's what we are taking together now. Let's please listen to that so that I won't be that it is me that is inventing it or I'm using it to criticize others. No, I'm using it even to criticize myself. Amen. Amen. Because none of us believers in the church is blameless. Amen. Amen. So let's read Matthew 1 to let's read Matthew 23. From verse 1 to the end. Amen. Let's yeah. people take it. Then Jesus said to the crowd and to the Please move closer so that you can. Then Jesus said to the crowd and, yes. and to the, his disciples, uh -huh. the teachers of the law and the, and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Uh -huh. you so, you, so you must be careful to do everything they tell you. Amen. So let's let's you know. take it one by one. This is the word of God I will, will be, I will be targeting as we go on. Now, amen. amen. This is Christ now, his disciples. Then the church of God, that is comprising of the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers of the law. Those who are well versed in the law. Amen. amen. Christ has a word for them. Amen. Let's hear it. But do not do what they do. Now, Christ taught here that you and I should not do what these our teachers of the law, for our Pharisees and Sadducees, those who are in the, in the leadership of the church, that we should not obey. God taught us disobedience against what they are teaching us here. Because they themselves were a disappointment, a bundle of disappointment before God. Amen. Amen. For they do not practice what they do. Why is it that Christ said, do not believe them? Please, those of you are with me, do not believe me, but believe in the word of God. That's why I say, take refuge in the word of God. Take refuge in God. That is why, if you want to have the word of God, that's why we change our approach to, look, let us all, yourself, ourselves, let us take the word of God, ourselves, together. So that it won't be that I have read something and I'm now twisting it against what you think, uh, what it should be, what God intends. Now, I would Christ Himself come, come up now, talking to me as a leader, talking to you as the uh, follower, talking to the geos, talking to the rabbis, that the people who are following us should not believe in us. Amen. Oh. They tie up every cumbersome loads and put them on another. What the Bible says now to us concerning the church is we the church. Christ says, Come on to me, ye that are heavy lady, you have labored and are heavy lady, I will give you rest. But they said the Bible, Christ Himself is talking there. That I invite them for peace. But when they came to us, what did we do? We tied a heavy yoke on them. Amen. Amen. They are not, they didn't need peace in the house of the, the Lord. The peace they came for, they are not finding that peace. Then where are we then going to be that we know God and that we have rest? Amen. God. But they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Now they say they give a body unto you, but they, are, they themselves don't want to partake of that, those bodies. Many of many a thing that we the leaders of the church ask you to do. We don't do them. That's what the Christ is saying. Then why should you obey us? Amen. Amen. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their they make their villa terrace wide and the town. Amen. Free. You see, this is Matthew 23. A lot is revealed here. And it does not exclude anybody, me inclusive, all the Jews. Who are, who are the rabbis of those days and the Pharisees and Sadducees of those days? He said, Our eyes are flamboyant. Alright? Everything we want, we want the whole world to see us as GOs. And we, we really pride it in our positions, in our titles. We pride in, we boast of our knowledge. We tell the world that a lot is happening. Whereas, we, we've had. We turn everything to religion. We created an empire for ourselves. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
They love the place of honor at at banquets and the most important. Of course, we are alone we are. We are known, Kani. Men of God. Men of God. Whereas our deeds do not portray that we are men of God. Amen. Yeah, our deeds do not portray that we are men of God, that we profess to be, and we love to be called men of God. Amen. Amen. They love to be greeted with respect in the Yes, United. indeed. Not only do we love to be respected, we also threaten people who don't respect us. Or if anybody talks against us. I mean, how many times have we, leaders of the church, all right, how many times have we, um, Threatened with the Bible, rebuking people, cursing people, and telling them when it gets to us, we say, "Touch not my anointing." When we are obviously oppressing the followers, then when they now speak up, we call them backslider, we call them names, and then we say, "Do touch not my anointing." We 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 are the one that is saying that we are the anointed. Amen. Not God. And to be called rabbi by others. To be well, called we rabbi, to... we love to be called, uh, the, what do we call them? Daddy Geos, Mommy Geos, Mommy in Israel, Daddy in Kinnikon, my father in the Lord, everything. Amen. We love to be called those big, big names so that we are revered. But, but you are not to be called rabbi. And for you are for you have one teacher. Now you are all brothers. Rabbi. Amen. Every time you see that one is rabbi. You know, we Christ now says, contrary to what we enjoy receiving, the kind of honor, the kind of high esteem that we are used to or that we desire, Christ says that we should not be called rabbis. We should not be called that in the Lord. We should not be called teacher. That the only father we have, my father in the Lord, my father in the Lord, is wrong. The only father we have is Christ correcting us. Today, that Dio, my father in the Lord, my mommy in the Lord, mommy Dio, we revere them more than God. But if we see what Christ is saying, correcting this thing that seems to be so common amongst men, that there is only one Father, and that is God Almighty. Yes? But you are not, and do not call anyone on earth Father. Do not call, just a moment, do not call anyone on earth Father. For you. Yes? For you have one Father. You have only one Father in heaven. That's the Lord that I say you should take refuge in this morning. Take refuge in, in, take your refuge in God Almighty, the only one Father. Not your daddy Gio, not your mommy Gio, not myself that I'm just a minister before you here, telling you what Christ says we should do. Amen. Amen. No, are you to, to be called instructors? You should not be called uh, what you call them, instructors. I mean that you are so, you remember, the Bible scholars in the Bible, you see, don't call yourself a uh, professor of theology. Eh? You don't call yourself because you have only one teacher, and that is Christ, the Messiah. Amen. And he is the one teaching us here directly now. Take refuge in him. Not in your geos. That is why we need to check out whatever I preach and teach you. You need to check them out. That is why we are taking the Bible together now. Amen. Amen. For you have one instructor, the Messiah. Mm -hmm. The greatest among you will be your servant. Now, do you see? Contrary to what we ministers of God portray to the people that we should be revered, we should be elevated, we should be so honored, even above God. Contrary to that, we are supposed to be your servants. Amen. Amen. If we want to be great, we have to be your servants. Amen. Amen. You can see that everything is opposite to what we are seeing in practice. Mm. Yes. For those who exalt themselves will be humble. If we exalt ourselves, we will be humble. And, and no one that will be. If you see what is happening in church, you see the social media, how much our deals, everybody is being brought low 
because we have elevated ourselves beyond the level that God wanted us to be. God wanted us to be humble, but we became the master instead of the servant. And God Himself is now bringing us ridicule before the people that we are following. Amen. And those who are good themselves will be exalted. And those of them, as we speak today, they are still humble men of God. Who do, even many, many humble men of God don't even want to become pastor, they don't want to become Jew, they don't want to just simply brother. Simply brother. And you will see it as Christ speaks from, yes? What to you, teachers of the law? The teachers of the law, and what to you? And the Pharisees, the Jews, the, the Sadducees, the Jews, amen. Amen. Yeah. You hypocrites. That you are hypocrites, that all of us, that we are hypocrites, our deeds do not match. What God wants from us. Amen. Amen. Yeah. You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. Uh -huh. You yourselves do not enter. No. You see the position that the Lord has placed us now, say, we are blockers, stumbling blocks. We block the door to the kingdom of God. We invite people to the house of God. No, that not was standing. But when they come in, we make them many times the children of hell. We said, come to Christ so that you get delivered. But when they come in, we yoke them to the point that even the things that we teach them do not uh, correspond with the mind of God. And then all of them, they begin to do evil. Hey, yes, go on. You yourself do not enter, no. Will you let those, those enter who uh -huh. are trying to? Uh -huh. what Please, like I said, the best way for you to enter the kingdom of God is for you to take refuge in God. Not in me that I'm preaching before you. Not in your daddy Jews or mommy Jews. Take refuge in that God so that we will stop blocking you. And how do we block you? Because you lack knowledge of the word of God. And then whatever pieces of the word of God we take in, we twist them to suit our purpose. Maybe it is to make money. We will twist it to get you to give us money. Maybe it is uh, to use you as women. Maybe in our speaker sense, we look at you as speaker sense. And we manipulate the word of God so that we are woo you. And the men amongst us we want to have sexual relationship with you. Okay, and then if it is to gain material wealth, we use it to exploit you materially. We use it to do all sorts of evils. And the, the word of God, because you lack it. So, from now on, take refuge in this only one God, Christ, that Christ represents, and you will be on your way to the kingdom of God. Yes. Go to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees. All of us that are Pharisees, teachers of the laws. You, <laughs> you hypocrites, you travel over land and sea to win a single You, what? You, you travel over land and sea, just as we do now. We do open evangelism, we do international evangelism, we do local evangelism, we do uh, television evangelism, we do internet evangelism. Then after we need it, we start exploiting them. Amen. Is that what right? the Lord sent us to do? Amen. Amen. We take advantage of people. Yes. And when you have succeeded, you make them to, you make them twice as much as a child of hell. <laughs> a child of hell. Even when we bring them in, we are supposed to be teaching them of the word of God. But we are teaching them things that have you never I've been to churches. My experience in the church, in fact, life in the church as a minister of God is actually to me is even worse than life within the family. You can understand that. In the family, the name of God is not what they put in the forefront. You know it is family, they call it. Family is family. So anybody can behave right now. But when you get to the house of God, and they say it's the house of God, your, your faith is in that God. And you want to, you are supposed to exhibit the character and nature of God. And when you get there, what do you see? You meet him with disappointment. Yes. Go to you, blind guide, guide, guide. You say, if anyone swear by the temple, it means nothing. Look at some of the teachings so that they are teaching us. We are teaching you. <laughs> because I say, it doesn't exclude me. Amen. Yeah, amen. But anyone who swears by the God, the God of the temple, is born by the Amen. Them. God bless you. You see, we teach you that come to the programs. 
Come to the vigils. Come to the Bible studies. Come to the seminars. Come to everything. And one example that Christ gave there is that when we come there, what do we teach you? We will say, pay your tithes. If you don't pay your tithes, you won't make heaven. What is that aimed at targeting? It is just to benefit and profit us. Then we now to teach you that, you see, if you swear by the uh, object on the temple, like let me put this microphone here. If you swear by this microphone, which is on the pulpit, we say it is it is a serious one. But what of the temple itself that makes the microphone sacred? We say it doesn't matter. We will say, bring all the monies to the church of God. We will never teach our people to make sure they take good care of their families at home, particularly their parents, their wives, their husbands, their children, and the larger family. We don't teach you all these things. Amen. All we are interested in is bringing everything that will tell you that if you pay money to the church of God, you will make heaven. Where is it written in the Bible that money will be for them? Amen. Yes. You blind fools, mm -hmm. which is greater, mm -hmm. the, go the gold or the temple that See makes the, the temple gold or the or, or the gold that makes the temple. Uh -huh. You also say, if anyone swear by the altar, it uh -huh. means nothing. Uh -huh. But anyone who swear by the gift on the altar is the gift on the altar is more than the altar itself. You blind That's what we teach. You you blind men, yes. which is greater, the gifts or the altar that makes the gift sacred. Mm. Therefore, anyone who swears by the altar swears by it and mm. by everything on it. Not knowing that when you swear by the altar, you swore by even the gift on the altar. You swore by everything. In fact, that swearing by the temple is more deadly than swearing by the microphone or the or the gifts, the items on the on the temple. Amen. But what we teach you is that just do the rituals. Do the rituals. Come to the video. Make sure you attend up. Make sure you pay all the, 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 the donations. Make sure you do this. Even if you don't pay this money, you don't make heaven. We have trivialized important issues. And go ahead. Verse 21. 21. And anyone who swears by the temple swear by it and by the one who dwells in it. Mm -hmm. And anyone who swear by every swear by God's throne and by the one who sits mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. 23. Woe to you, teachers uh -huh. of the law. And teachers Christ, of the law. The hypocrites. Mm -hmm. You give a tenth of your species of Alleluia. your high speech. Go ahead. Go ahead. Deal and combine with you and neglected the more important matters of the law. Amen. Praise the Lord. You see, you see, when Christ wants to emphasize a point, he will call the people concerned. Woe to you, the teachers of the Bible, the scribes, the Bible scholars. Woe to you, the Jews, the pastors. Woe to you, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, the leaders of the church. Woe unto you all, because of what you perverted justice. Apart from teaching them what was wrong, you now say that, you know, you pay your tithes. So this time around, you even pay your tithes. You make the people to pay. All right? You make the people to pay tithes. And collecting the tithes from them, you did not give back to them. You, you perverted justice. And you leave the matter that is more important. So you say if you pay your tithe, you make him. You, 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 did, you didn't say surrendering your soul to Christ is what will make you to make heaven. And because you just want to collect money, you say if you pay. And then you yourself, you don't pay. But you perverted just, you see the poor, you didn't take care of them that are following you. Poor people are filled with the church. Indeed, what do you do? You drive them away, you say they are a camp because they have no money to drop. And you say, send them away. Amen. And you threaten them by saying, if you eat your title, you will die. And you say, if they will eat their title, the evil will happen to them. And that's why things are trying to all forms of unbiblical theories that we have brought in because of the appetite we have for materialism. Go ahead. 
Mercy and faithfulness. Mercy to others. Faithfulness. We have neglected. You should have practiced the You see, as at the time, let me make a clarification here. As at the time Christ was being taught, the law was still applicable. The law did not come to the grace, did not come into full effect until Christ had died and risen. So if you see here that Christ was even following them to Passover uh, services in those days, it was correct. If you hear that people were still paying tithes and offerings and uh, first fruits, it was still correct during the times of prayer. Even if you hear that after Christ has healed somebody and uh, he will say, go to the temple for them to finish the cleansing, the rituals, it was still correct. All these other things became incorrect after the Lord has jettisoned the law, which is in Hebrews 7, 1 to 15. Amen. Amen. After Christ has died and had risen, it was then that everything about this rituals went away, including time, including first fruit, including obedience of all these other laws, like if you have the man has to be clean shaved. A woman has to do one thing or the other, and then you don't come to service if you are um, if you are clean, if you are having your issues of women and all these things, all these various rules and regulations. They were part of the regulations of the old. They were all gone. That is why if a, if a woman gives birth and she's capable of coming to church any day after, she can come. Not on. There is no rituals that will be performed again, apart from dedicating the child and welcoming the child to the church of God. But we tell them so many, today we are still observing the old days rule that even he, what I ask us as ministers of God is, do we ever read Hebrew, the book of Hebrew, to know the difference between the old and the new testament, to know the ones that we are no longer applicable and the ones that are applicable. Even all the metaphysical orders, including Moses' order, they've all been Jesus' according to Hebrew 7. Your title is Hebrew 7, Hebrew 7, 1, verse 5. Tells you, you gave it according to the law, and the law is set up to Jesus. If you are Jesus' the law, how come that you are still paying that? How come you still are claiming that Pelagans is here to pay? is for today's dispensation because we are hypocrites. We leaders, the church of God, we are who? We are hypocrites. May God deliver us from hypocrisy mm. in your virtuous name. Yes. Message four. Mm. You blind guys, you, you strain out a snack and swallow a camel. Mm -hmm. What to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees? Mm -hmm. the, you hypocrites, you, you clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are full of greed and self Amen. Hey, you see how, how can I use the word bitter? Christ is towards us, the ministers of God. You can see the precious time that Christ is spending with us, the ministers of God. Look at the precious time. He started correcting us from the very beginning. Until today, we are still doing exactly what Christ condemned. Amen. Amen. Pharisees and Sadducees, in the first place, they disagreed among themselves. The Pharisees believe that there is resurrection. So, by extension, we will say that. But they are still expecting their Messiah. The Sadducees didn't believe that there is, resurre there is resurrection, life after death. Mm. And Christ is right before them, who has died and has risen. Amen. So, Christ was among who would die, as at the time we are talking, but later died and has risen. Christ was with them. They didn't recognize it. They didn't even believe that a Messiah has come. Up till now, some Israelites are still waiting for the Messiah to come. Whereas Christ has come. And it is the second coming that everybody is waiting for. And then, these are the people that are carrying followers, large followers. Go to the internet, some of them, two million, three billion, and so on, my members on the internet, following them. And unfortunately, we also train you to worship us, not to. Is this what God has sent us to do? Amen. Is that the end? Amen. Yes, sir. Okay. Amen. You can see, this is the Christ. 
And okay, this is the church motto. For instance, you are here now. And everything I'm preaching to you, I don't practice it myself. I say, don't lie. I'm lying. Don't fornicate. Don't commit adultery. I am fornicating. I'm committing adultery. I say, uh, because I spend your money, I say, bring your tent, tent of your income. If you don't bring it, ah, that you won't make heaven. Just to make sure you bring it. And not only that, I will say, we want to build the church. Bring everything you have. Forget about your parents. I will never, I don't ever teach you to say, go and take care of your parents. Make sure you invest in your children. You know, and all that. At the end of the day, I feel satisfied. I become materialistically wealthy. That you are impoverished. impoverished. Amen. May God forgive us as leaders. Now, let's go to the book of Job. The book of Job 33 and 34 that we are taking care of today. Talk about how a life in particular is a life now versus Job. You know, like I said, we knew from the very beginning that, you know, all those who are trying to cancel um, Job lacked understanding. Unfortunately, they lacked understanding. And because they lacked understanding, proper understanding, what did they do? They diagnosed Job wrongly. Instead of going to him to console him, to guide him, to pray for him, they started looking for why, in fact, the why they are looking for. Why did Job find himself in the position he found himself? Everybody concluded that it was because he had a secret faith. Just like we would say today that if you don't believe that if you have an issue, you come to us as ministers of God. The first question we ask you, are you paying your tithes? Are you attending regular services regularly? Are you doing the will of God? Have you observed this? Have you observed that? And then, even in marriage, we ask you so many questions that, you know, have no relevance to what is happening to you. Instead of us, they pray for you and not just seeking the face of the Lord for you. We will look for something that will pin down. And at the end of the day, it's not as if after we say all those things. We will say, okay, you've not paid your tithe for one year. Go and pay for one year and you'll see miracle. Amen. You don't pay your first fruit. Oh, go and pay your first fruit for one year, you see me. Really. And then, oh, you will not be coming to program. Now, every program you must attend, it is then you will be healed. Whereas the issues that you are facing, they are either God permitted, or you self inflict them upon yourself, or you know, one way or the other, they just have to come to your life, maybe part of your destiny. And for everything, God wants to glorify Himself inside of you. But we won't tell you all this. All we'll be telling you is that it is your sin. It is your sin. It is your sin. It is your sin. This is what you are telling you. Eli, who too, whom I ever thought initially was the one that was going to be correct, was the one that came up and said, No. Joe, uh, Joe stop deceiving yourself. If we don't know, God knows. That you have a secret sin. How many people? Job kept on repeating, I am blameless before God. As for taking care of the poor, which is the fundamental or cardinal principle of God, I took care of the poor. My house, my doors are not closed to strangers. I did everything that God wants me to do. Though I cannot explain why this thing happened to me, but all I know, Shah, is that my redeemer lives on. I just still had faith in God. But all their friends, I mean, even the wife, betrayed at point, at a point. See, just admit your error. Each time they ask you to admit his error, say, no, I have no error to confess. God knows me better. But I have no error to confess. Let me tell you, this cannot be said of you and I. None of us has no sin in us. But all the sin, are, is it the sins that are bringing the troubles we are having? Not necessarily so. Only God can tell or distinguish between the two. Whether it is the sin, <coughs> or whether it is our sin, or whether it is something else. Amen. Because only God has the full, the fullness of details. 
And the second person that knows about us is ourselves. If we have secret sins, we know that we cannot disclose to you, to any other person. But to you, you are now saying it is our sin, it is our sin. So anytime you go to the church of God and you say it is your sin, examine yourself. I'm not saying no, I'm not saying shun them. Examine yourself to see truly whether you have secret sins. If you do, confess them unto the Lord. And he will forgive you. And he will heal you. Amen? <laughs> he will forgive you and he will heal you. But it's not all the time that we say so that it is correct. If you know you don't have secret sins, like Job, pour your mind out to the Lord, Lord. Before you, I am blameless. I have done all that you wanted me to do. But if there is still any corner that I don't understand where I have been, please forgive me. And have your faith that things will turn around for the better for you. That is why I pray. For every one of you today who have been blamed for nothing, I pray. God Almighty will put your enemies to shame in the Yehoshua sin. Because how does God put enemies to shame? When God has rescued you and restored you, and even blesses you more than uh, your beginning, just like you, his end was far better than his beginning. And I pray for you and I, our end shall be better than our beginning, the Yehoshua sin. You can see now, in summary, you can see that if you take refuge in your work, you will be disappointed. On your wife, on your husband, on your children, on your family, on your country. How much has Nigeria not disappointed you? Amen. The leadership in Nigeria. Amen. If not that God is the God of this nation, who would have been left? Because of what our leaders are doing. Even in the church of God, like I said, we have exploited you. We are doing it. And anytime now we talk about it, I'm saying we, because uh, nobody is exempted. Let me put that way. So that I won't be as if I'm criticizing others alone. I need to examine myself whether I'm doing the will of God. You, fellow ministers of God, examine yourself. Have we not placed ourselves? Bigger than God, that our people are now worshiping us instead of the God Almighty that they should take refuge in. So, those of you, my ministers, our followers, please take refuge in the Lord your God. And it is only there, Job had no choice than to just take refuge in that Lord. You remember Daniel, Misha, Daniel, and Abel, Daniel? Yeah. Huh? Mm-hmm. They said, if your God. If our God will not answer us, we are ready to perish. We take refuge in Him anyway. And God rescued them. I pray, if you trust in this Lord and take refuge in Him, He will not disappoint you in your wish for Him. He has never disappointed. That is why in all my situation in life, I always have this hope that my God will never disappoint me. How about you? Take refuge only in God and you will see the result. And your end will be better than your will. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you once again for this great opportunity and the great blessings which you have taught us today through your word, according to Psalm 18, verse 25 to 36, Matthew 23, which exposed the hypocrisy of we religious leaders and you know, telling us to do that justice instead of those visuals. And then the book of Job that lets us know Job 34 and 35, 33 and 34, which tells us, tell us about the need for us to remain resolute in you, no matter how that ends. If we trust in any man, they will fail us, even when we needed them most. Daddy, we really appreciate you because you are guiding us. I said that that's really your wishes. I come before your throne of mercy today, Lord. Even myself, concerning everything that we have, have mercy upon me. In your wishes. And fellow ministers of God, being and small, Lord God Almighty, have mercy upon us all. Let us stop being hypocrites from now on. In your wishes.
Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. In Yahushua's name, we are praying. Amen. Pray.